Before I decided to get into developing color film by myself, I looked into how much money I would be saving because that's why I want to do it, right? I didn't find an exact answer considering what kind of chemical I'll be using, how I'll be using the chemical, and all the other equipment I need to buy, and the water, the electricity, the time and the effort goes into collecting and dispose the use the chemical. In the long run, it may save me money, but you know what? Save money or not, I feel like this is something I wanted to learn. Hey guys, this is Sian. Welcome back to another episode of Learning New Things. Today, I'm gonna share with you my first time experience developing color film at home. I will be talking about the research I've done before getting into it, the equipment and the chemical I'm currently using, and uh, I will show you some photos from six rolls of film I developed so far, and what I've learned from it. To be honest, I was very intimidated by the idea of developing color film. I've never done it. It feels very complicated. First of all, as color film goes, you have a couple of different processing methods. You have the C41 processing, that's for most of the color negative film, and you have the E6 for slide film, and then you have the ECN2 for movie film that has the ramjet layer, uh, like the Kodak Vision 3. But today we're only gonna be talking about the C41 process because that's the only film I've shot so far. I haven't done slide film and codec vision, all that just yet. If you've watched my previous video, you know I've already tried developing black and white film. The major issue of developing color film is the temperature control. Black and white film, as long as your room is not too hot or too cold, you can pretty much do it at room temperature. But with the color film, the chemical temperature needs to be controlled precisely to get accurate and consistent results. So I began to research the way to heat and control temperature. My first instinct was to use a temperature controlled water kettle. I guess I can just get two of these to just boil chemicals in these. However, um, the temperature of these kettles are not accurate enough and after a while it becomes difficult to clean. So. And then I looked into some laboratory equipment. I looked into something like this, this, and this. And I almost bought myself a water bath tank like this. And then after watching some YouTube videos, I also came across the Cine Steel temperature control system that you can heat the chemical directly or heat the water and make your own water bath. I saw some people also use slow cook and use foot bath tank. There are all sorts of solutions. And then I was thinking, but how would I minimize the temperature drop after I pour the chemical into the film tank? Should I leave the film tank in the water bath the whole time while I'm agitating it? And then I saw this roller base and then I even looked into a liquid moving machine and stuff. At this point, I was so deep in the internet rabbit hole and my ADHD mind just forgot I'm only a photographer trying to process some film. I'm not a chemist nor an engineer. But by the end of the day, I did find an engineer who's already working on the idea and made it into a home developing kit. And I landed myself with this. All right. This is a new film darkroom toy I've been waiting for a long time. I'm so very excited. Oh, I can't do unscripted unboxing. The package is pretty big. There are a lot of parts. H-35 
Darkroom Film Processor Water Tank. <sighs> Here we go. There are a lot of parts, but after you put everything together, you basically get a temperature controller and a rotation unit all in one control box, a roller base, a bottle holder with four bottles for your chemicals. That's it. That's all to it. And now all I need to do is to get some chemicals and try it out. The chemical I got is the Cinesteel powder kit. There are three parts of the chemical and it will eventually mix into two bottles. One bottle of developer and one bottle of Blix. That's combined bleach and fix into one, I, I think. And that's it. There is a... <laughs> Sorry, I ripped this. There is a instruction paper that came with this package. So you just need to uh, follow the instruction here, step by step to mix your chemical. It's very easy and simple. If I can do it, you can do it, remember? If you haven't seen my black and white developing video, here are some stuffs, basic stuff you will need. You need a graduate or measuring cup, a stir stick, thermometers. I have two. One came with my black and white developing kit, but this one only goes up to 30 Celsius. That's 85 Fahrenheit. So I only use this for black and white developing. And after that, I was trying to use kitchen thermometers like this, and I found them not very accurate and then i got myself another mercury oh this is a shorter one huh and then i got myself another mercury one that goes up to 65 celsius that's 150 fahrenheit getting accurate temperature is very critical so make sure to get a good thermometer and then you need a timer I have been using my phone. Hi Siri. Start a three and a half minute timer. Three minutes and 30 seconds. Counting down. Siri, stop. Siri, cancel. Siri. Sometimes when Siri doesn't understand my English, it gets a little complicated and I'm like all panicking. So um, I got myself a four channel um, timer that you can preset each step and just press a button. To me, this is much simple and easy. Oh, you need a can opener or film taker to open the film. The film tank I'm using, it's the Jobo 1520. It can load up two roll of 135 or two roll of 120. And I got this two big bottle when I bought more chemical. Um, when I was making this video, I was just storing chemical into this like regular water bottle. All right, that's chaotic, but let's get to the processing part. With this water tank, just be careful, only fill the water below the water line, and then plug the cable cord in, turn the cord to start the machine. You will see two LED panels light up. The top one is the temperature control. I set it to 40 Celsius, so the bath will stay at that temperature. Without this kit, you can simply just use a bucket, just fill it with hot water and uh, maybe use like a slow cooker. It does the same thing. Just keep stirring the water and make sure the temperature is even and just keep checking your temperature. That should do too. After you mix your chemical, you can pour 250 milliliter chemical into the bottle. The Jobo tank I use, it shows up here. For rotation process, you need 240 milliliter. I just pour 250 for easy mass. <laughs> and then you can leave the bottle in the bath for it to preheat. At the same time, while you're waiting for the chemical to heat up, but you can go ahead and start loading your film into your tank. 
So when I was editing this video, I realized it is way too long. So we're gonna skip this whole loading part. Maybe we'll do it some other time. Now you gotta check your chemical temperature. If you waited long enough, the chemical should be pretty much the same temperature with the water in the water bath. According to the instruction from the Sydney Steel chemical I'm using, the developing temperature should be 39 Celsius. That's 102 Fahrenheit. For normal development, that's 3.5 minutes. Here's a chart you can see with different time and different temperature. And then for the Blix, it doesn't have to be that accurate. The temperature should be between 24 to 40 Celsius, that's 75 to 105 Fahrenheit for eight minutes. And then wash it for three minutes. Running water or fill an empty tank seven times. And after that, there is stabilizing. I don't have stabilizer, so I didn't do that. Before all this, there's also a optional pre-wash. I also didn't do that. So for me, there's only three steps. Pour the developer in, close the lid, put it on a roller, start the timer for three and a half minutes, and then dump the developer out, put the blicks in, put on a roller for eight minutes, and then dump the blicks out, and then rinse the film for three minutes. And then, voila, you're done. Dry it out, and you're ready to scan. Easy. <laughs> this whole process is actually much easier than I expected to be, especially uh, different chemical might vary slightly, but overall the C41 process is pretty standard for all C41 film, despite the brand or the speed of the film. That alone makes this process easier than black and white film. The first two rolls I developed are from a Studio Beauty shoot. I shot a roll of 35mm Portrait 400 and a roll of 120mm Actor 100. I don't know what was I thinking. As Actor 100 being a more difficult film to work with and because the heavy makeup, the strobe light, and the actor being actor, I find it a little bit difficult to judge if I even get the correct color and everything. And then I decided to go out to shoot some other film in regular natural light. All right, I am at the Descanso Garden right now. Uh, today I'm going to shoot with a camera I'm more familiar with and the, a film I'm more familiar with. So I shot another roll of 35mm Fuji Extra 400, a roll of Kodak Gold 120 with my Pentax 645. I also went to my first beer the camera gathering and uh, shot two more rolls with my Hasselblad. The first row here is the Fuji Extra 400 shot on the Nikon FM2. All of these photos are scanned with the Epson VA50, uh, edited with Negative Lab Pro. I didn't go into Lightroom or Photoshop to do further editing as how I used to do. Um, just to show you, I don't know, the unedited color. <laughs> You can see there are still some dust left on the film, didn't get edited out.
your style. Can I take a picture of you? Okay. Uh, do you mind to come over here to that flower? No, how about the whole family? Or you just want me? Or? Sure, I can take a picture of the whole family too. On the same day, I also shot a roll of Kodak Gold 120 with my Pentax 645N2. Here is the same shot on 35 versus on medium format. Can you see the differences? <laughs> Kodak Gold 120 is the film stock I'm mostly familiar with. It's cheaper than Portra, it has good latitude, so I shot a lot of gold to practice and to learn. So I kind of know what to expect and what to look for. And this roll is shot at 100 ISO instead of the uh, 200 uh, box speed. <laughs> Excuse me, I really like your outfit. Can I take a picture of you? <laughs> All right, let's have you like come this way just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. What should I do? Excuse me. Can I take a picture of you? Sure. You look really nice when you were standing by the flower. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Can I take a picture of you? Take a picture together. I heard you guys are visiting. Yeah. yeah? Well, she's a I like the color of your shirt and your hairstyle. <laughs> oh, sure. Can I have you like stand over there, okay. like in the shade over here? Okay. Right here. Yep. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Let me see. Excuse me. Can I take a picture of you? Are you work? Are you work here? Okay. <laughs> Give me one second. Oh, this looks really pretty. I think this roll turned out the best. It's clean, pretty sharp, color is nice and neutral. I may add a little more saturation if I'm going to edit them more. There is this one shot on this whole roll that came out with this weird looking watermark or just uneven developed mark. That probably caused by me loading the film unevenly. I don't know, I'm not sure. For the next roll, it's the same film. I used the same batch of developer. According to the instruction, the chemical is good for certain amount of rolls. You definitely can reuse the chemicals, but every time the chemical is used, it will become weaker and then you need to uh, mix the unused chemical um, and adding developing time accordingly. There are some equations and mass and number I still need to figure out. So to save my headache, I have been using new batch of develop developer every time. Deve develop so to save the headache, I have been using new batch of developer every time, pretty much. <laughs> I also read about some people say just don't even reuse the developer. It's a bit wasteful, but at least it's much easier to get good quality and consistent results if you just use new developer every time. Anyway, I haven't quite figured out what I'm gonna do uh, going forward. So I bought some new. So I just got myself more chemicals this is the liquid version it should work the same um yeah i guess i'll just have to keep experimenting and learning <laughs> this is the one i used the same chemical the same one now it's still drying i didn't use the squeegee so there's some still some water 
So I reused the developer and expecting to see if there's any different because the film is the same, they're both Kodak Gold, but then I realized the show was shot on a different camera, so it's hard to judge. <laughs> Another thing I didn't do with this row is I didn't use the squeegee to squeeze the water out. You can see there are some watermark left and some more dust. I always worry about this thing will scratch the negative. Uh, I'm told if you don't want to use this, you can also use a sponge. No matter what you're using. Remember to squeeze the water out if you don't want watermark. And after this roll, I also shot a roll of Fuji Pro 400. Alright, and this is the last one. Overall, I encountered two major problems. Number one, since I'm using the rotation method rather than the agitation method, uh, it does save me some chemical, but every time when I pour the developer into the film tank, I have to do it fast as possible and put it on a roller and get it rolling as fast as possible. If not, you will end up with this visible line at the bottom of your film. That's the chemical sitting at the bottom of the tank and this portion of the film getting developed more than the rest. I try to fix it by retouching it out to make it less obvious, but this is something I definitely want to avoid in the future. <laughs> And the problem number two is the blicks I'm using. I don't know if this is a specific chemical thing or all blicks just does this. When it's rotating, it creates a lot of air. The first two times I'm processing, when it's on the roller, this lid just got blow open. <laughs> it won't expose your film. You will just get blicks leak all over the water and you have to dump the water out before you start the next batch. And to avoid this, after putting the blicks in, just hand rotate it a couple of times and let it air out and close it, rotate, air out, and also this lid here, press this top part in. So when it's sitting on a roller, if there's an air buildup, you will see it and you can stop the roller and open the lid and let the air out again. Alright, going back to the TH film developing kit, I only had it for a short amount of time and I only developed a couple of rows. Um, the first time I used it, I was all over the place, that's why I didn't have uh, footage. For the first two rows, I forgot the timer and then the chemical was leaking. But once you get a workflow going, it does make the process easier. The water temperature is fairly accurate. It's very easy and simple to understand. You can change the rotation speed and it's also modular enough. So down the road, if I want to get a bigger film tank or getting a bigger water tank, I can do that and then I can mass develop multiple rows at once. I would hope there is a drain out pipe somewhere so I don't have to take everything out and to dump the water when I'm done, but uh, the TH lab is continuing making modifications. I'm looking forward to see the future model of this home developing kit. In the end, I just want to say if you simply want to save money, I don't recommend you do this. 
developing and scanning by yourself. I don't think it worth it. Despite the initial investment you need to put in to get all of this equipment, this whole process is very, very time consuming. But at the same time, it's very, very fun as well. <laughs> So if you're like me, you wanted to learn the process and you wanted to have more control of the result, if you enjoy doing this, and definitely try it. It's not as complicated as it seems. Again, if I can do it, you can do it. All right, this is it for this week's video. I recently slowed down a little bit with this whole video making thing. Um, more I learn about film and more I know about them and more I find out how much I don't know. Um, I sometimes worry about doing things wrong in my video, but I shouldn't be afraid of being wrong. So please, if I make mistakes, comment, message me, please let me know and uh, so I can keep learning and keep correcting myself and keep improving. All right, this is him. <laughs> I will see you next time. Bye. I kind of like this new setup here. I think we're gonna stick with this setup for a little bit. Um, Still got some lighting to fix. I guess I'll add some light here and there. I don't know.